Okay, welcome, folks. Uh, yeah, this is uh, just uh, another approach from the older guys. Yeah, this is not a modern style, maybe. About me, I'm the Guan Han. I'm the work as an SRO in Line Corporation, and the PyCon Korea organizers about 10 years. And I'm also helping the PyCon API organizing. And the Python AC organization is in my progress. And I'm also as a director of a PSF. And you can find me on the PyCon US writing talk. I did it, a uh, fantastic writing talk. <laughs> okay, you need to see. Yeah, from the beginning, we should think about the, what is web service. And yeah, as you know, we do the web service almost every day. And server just pushes the data and the client is passing it. The server has just a bunch of data. It's a mix of HTML and CSS images and the JavaScript to the client logics and some metadata like cookies and the headers. So it's very simple. The server generated data and the client passing it. Yeah, it didn't change it over 20 years. It didn't change. You should believe me. It means uh, we need uh, just uh, data. Yeah, HTML, server generated dynamic data from database and some images and the CSS and some client side logics. You know the client side logics means just the data validations, verifications from the client side. Yeah, it can be complex. And sometimes it calls data from the server side to the modified client data. Yeah, it's the one you know. But in the older ways, people server generated all the data, client passing it, just all. We didn't make we didn't do the client side application at that time. But after some days, there is API. API is the way server and client talk. After that, we start to call applications. Yeah, you know, there is a single page applications, there is multi page applications. Uh, multi page application is something we use it in all days. Why modern ways matters? Too many contexts. As you know, there is a business side context and development side context. And too many developers. At least one backend and one frontend in years. Or you can work 20 hours in a day. But still you have many contexts to consume. So there is many context switching, and you need to find out which logic should could go where. Teams, if you have teams, you need cross-border and need to write down many documentations to, set, to talk about the API and our specification. So, Okay, it doesn't work. Uh, okay, we need to make API stack, and we need to make API with Python and others. After that, we need to find the database, and we need to find the development deployment. And after that, it's time to front engineering. After that, we find web framework like uh, React and Vue and others and select and learn. And we need to find build tools and select and learn. Oh, I find out type is good. So we need to start TypeScript. TypeScript is better. Yeah, I, I know that. <laughs> it doesn't work now. Wait a second.
Yeah, so again, yeah, we need the APS. Uh, so it's time to front end engineering. And after that, we find our TypeScript better, and we need to build some artifact, right? And after that, we find out, oh, we need to run Node.js server to server-side rendering. OK, after we found out TypeScript, we want to mix JS and TypeScript, and the run CSS and some libraries. Oh, I know the difference of the common JS and ESM. So why Python backend need it? We can unify with the TypeScript, right? Actually, you're going to need it. So what should I do? So I usually React, Vue and Next, and Next and what? Wait, what am I doing? Yeah, sometimes I think we are getting back to old days. Sometimes I think, oh, I'm just old guys and getting older. Sometimes I think I am the young folks. But I make, but I, it make productivity better than and it's for me. Yeah, use data max. Yeah, what is data max? It's a simple JavaScript library which handles AJAX and event handling and the DOM modifications. So in my case, I use Django HTMX. Yeah, what is Django HTMX? Uh, if you see the code of Django HTMX, it's a, just a simple middleware. If the request is from the HTMX, it handles in the middleware to check its uh, HTML request. And that is some Django template text to debug HTMX. That's all. And you need to use these libraries in Python. In my case, I use Django HTMX and Django WZ tweaks and crispy twin tail and PyTest Playwright and PyTest Django. But uh, this is kind of a approach with the limitations. I recommend it for the start from the sole programmers and the small teams and all the stage of development and internal admin tools. And uh, sometimes the uh, requirement always changing. You need to use the, from this approach. But it's not recommended. If, you, if your web application is client focused, I don't recommend it. And if you have massive users, yeah. Please hire front end engineers. And you want a fancy UI? Yeah, please hire that. <laughs> yeah, this is just a purpose, not a rule. Yeah, as you know, we can make progress change from this approach, and you can move to the modern way with a front end engineers. If service grows, we can change to the modern way. How can I approach? No more API. Only logic uh, runs on the server side. Client logic will be handled by HTMX in the Django template. And sometimes with uh, AlpineJS. If it's very complex, uh, you should try AlpineJS. Yeah, CSS, yeah, I don't know the design. Just uh, use the twin tail CSS and, and use the crispy tailwind for the farm handling and use the template. Uh, there is a distributed templates which is useful for your applications. You can find it on GitHub. OK, we'll start from set up Django HTMX with other dependencies. But uh, please start with uh, Mazify Tailwind in it. Because uh, if you start Django project, uh, Django application with a start project, it will not copy the, from the Tailwind CSS. So in my case, I tried to start a project with a Mazify Tailwind in it. Is that, yeah, actually there is a documentation. You need to write down your application name. And the uh, Tailwind, uh, Django Tailwind will uh, make uh, your application with a cookie cutter. So it, it will be very easier without uh, knowing about uh, Node.js and other things. And the view logic. Yeah, same as functional view or class view. 
classified view, but you need to check uh, there is a request that HTMX in the middleware. You can switch logic by checking the request that HTMX. Uh, this is uh, example logic from my uh, class based view, update view. Yeah, it's a, uh, you can see it, yeah. It's just used for PAM update, but as you know, HTMX is uh, updated by the AJAX, so if the request is from the, uh, yeah, as you know, the update view is uh, just to update the form, but if it's success, it just redirects your browsers to the successful URL. But this is, uh, if the request from the HTMX, it return, if it returns, redirect a response to your browser, yeah, it will fail. So you need to check your request HTMX parameters. Yeah, if you directly access the page, and if you success with the PAM validation, it will return you redirect with the upper uh, response code. But if you're using HTMX and want to get a partial response from the client, you should make your rendering with uh, like this logic. So, to using HTMX, you can use it in the HTML only, but it's very helpful if you're using like uh, some libraries like uh, Django Wizard Tweaks. This, uh, this template tag is like this. Uh, it will render pair from the farm object and the category field, and append the attribute with the name, read only, and yeah, type and placement. In your browser, it will be rendered like this. Yeah, so it was very hard at the old days to make appears uh, visible and uh, usable in the template tab. But with a uh, widget tweaks, you can use it easily. And if you want to change the template variables, you can use like this. It, uh, this code is uh, just a farm variable. Yeah, it contains a simple pair, and this code will add attribute uh, name of foo and values var. And after that, either add the name is foo and bus. Yeah, it looks wide, right? And the render result is like this. Because uh, in the Django widget tweaks, uh, either leftmost filter wins. With this, you can make a default pairs on the right side. So, uh, finally, uh, we can find this way. You have, you have form object in your template, right? And we can make it for Ajax, like this. Just add HX get uh, attributes with a value with a URL. And this will render to like this. Yeah, it will not work, but anyway. The name input field will get a HTMLX get page from the example URL. So this is why this is why proposed works. Yeah, we can see the another uh, example of click to edit. This is from the HTML template and. You can see there is a farm is rendered with the changed name to the read only because uh, we want to show you the forms and uh, <coughs> it's not beautiful as in default template. 
So we want to make it as a crispy peel. It will render your peel with a Django crisp foam, with a tailwind. And after that, there is button. And it, it, it has HTMX attribute, HX cap. It means uh, if you click, it will fire the Ajax to that uh, target field. And after that, the response HTML will update this uh, div contents. Yeah, because you can see it on the upper HX target and HX swap attribute. So after, after you got a response from the Ajax page, it will render like this. This page is a, uh, this page will get from the entire form and return to the crispy, uh, rendered with the, with the crispy. And it has buttons and the cancels, right? And if you save it, it will make a post because it is it has attribute with HS post and the HX star cap and the HX swap. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. A little better? For the bigger. For the bigger? Okay. Okay, I need to fix it. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, uh, this, this is just uh, all your logics in your template tab. In your template. So, you don't need to ask your front-end engineers, we need this logic. Yeah. And as you know, if you use Ajax in Django, and you always have a CSRF, CSRF problem. So in this case, the HTMX has uh, this approach. Just to put these uh, headers in the your CSRF tokens, and it will automatically call your Ajax with the, with this uh, CSRF tokens. And how to test HTMX without hands? Because it is kind of HTML with a JavaScript mixed. You cannot test automatically, but in my case, I use the live server test case. If you use live server test case, it will launch the server in another thread, and you can use Selenium or Playlight to test the uh, case because uh, it's uh, including the JavaScript. You need to test it with the browsers, not only hand, uh, not only uh, string test. Okay, and after that, some days, you need API. In that case, I adapted Django Ninjas from that page. It's a simple library, you can use it to make it uh, API, a RESTful API from uh, Django. You don't need the uh, Django REST framework because, uh, yes, some days we might to another framework but uh, we can start from step by step. Oh, that's all. Yeah. What should I do next? Uh, please use HTMX instead of backend and front end errors. And don't spend too much time in front end logics. Yeah. And you can check the nice examples from the HTMX page. There is uh, many examples using the HTML log uh, logics from uh, with HTMX. With that, you can use it. You, you can replace 
almost uh, every front-end logics. And there is some repositories. I need, you can check some Django HTML examples with that. And also, I don't know him, but there is a nice YouTube channels, uh, which is uh, bug bytes, and there is a Django and HTML playlist, and you can run it in about two hours. Yeah, it has almost every exams. Yeah, and I finished my presentations. If you have questions, please let me know. Yeah. Thank you for introducing the HTML. It was nice. Um, if the, the one of the beginner want to run a new programming uh, with a web development, there there might be a two way: uh, the, the conventional server side rendering and the HTML way. Then you suggest. So, which you will recommend to the student that if someone want to run a web programming in beginning? Yeah, it's very hard. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, in my case, I just recommend it from the Django HTML because uh, uh, it does not take too much time to see the result with the Ajax. So, yeah, I think HTML is a better approach to learn. Uh, so you mean if the student want to using uh, Ajax, then you will recommend to use uh, HTML. That's the better, yeah. right? Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you don't need from the basics. Yeah. Hello, thanks for the talk. Uh, because HTNX is relatively new, so I just want to ask, uh, uh, did HTNX in your company uh, adapt uh, a lot of things? Or how many, how, how many, how many website uh, is launched? with HTNX, maybe in uh, production? Yeah, yeah actually, uh, in my company, there is uh, three products which was written in HTMX, but it's an internal product. And yeah, I cannot show you, but yeah, just mm -hmm. uh, one or two person, you can make a big internal product for the other means. Thank you for that. I, had a, I was wondering, how do you manage the templates? Because I found that difficult. Like when you have like, how do you manage like the, the, you have the Ajax response template and then just like the regular template? Do you have any suggestions or techniques for that? Yeah, actually, it's a hard thing. But if you make, a, if a, in my case, I used uh, some naming conventions in my template name. Uh, with that, I can predict things. Uh, without, uh, without think, yeah. So you, please use uh, naming conventions for your own. In my case, my team has uh, just uh, me and another member. So yeah, we know each other's, <laughs> yeah, and the naming convention means. Other questions? Okay. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please let me know, and I will update this uh, presentation with a white background and yeah, show you the updated code. Thank you. <laughs>